All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find a Taylor series. But before I do that, I want to remind you about what we talked about last time. Last time, we came up with formulas for polynomial representations of e to the x, sine of x, cosine of x, and 1 over 1 minus x. And we'll use those a little bit today, but we really just need to know these for problems as we move forward. And also, almost forgot, I defined the Maclaurin series for you. Okay, so if we have just any old function f and we know all of its derivatives at x equals 0, we can write a series representation for f. We can write f as a power series. We can write it as a high degree polynomial. But today, we're going to be dealing with the question of, like, what if we're dealing with a function that is not trig or exponential? Or what if we're looking at a function and we have all of its information at a point, like all of its derivatives that say x equals 5? But we don't have any information at x equals 0. We'll learn how to deal with that today. So for today, I'm going to just tell you the formula for the nth degree Taylor polynomial. Okay? And you see that it's very similar to the formula for the nth degree Maclaurin polynomial, except we've got information about f and its derivatives at x equals c. Okay? So we're going to be taking f of c, f prime of c, and, but instead of multiplying by x, you'll see now that we're multiplying by x minus c. Now, if you're interested in this formula, I've got that in a separate video, and I will just link that up there at the top right here. Okay. But for now, we're just going to use the formula. And I'll start with a nice table example. So we're going to write the fourth degree Taylor polynomial for h of x at x equals 1. And what I recommend doing on a problem like this is kind of starting with the skeleton. That's why I left the definition up there. So we know that if you know we're dealing with function h at x equals 1, we're just going to replace f with h and c with 1. And I'm going to copy up to the fourth degree. So I'll just bring that in. And then we're just going to kind of, you know, take these values here, h of 1, h prime of 1, h double prime, h triple prime, h quadruple prime. I copied that value in wrong. But we'll get all of those values from the table right there. Okay, So I'll just kind of copy it in, and it'll be 11 plus 30 times x minus 1 plus 42 over 2 factorial times x minus 1 squared. F h triple prime is 99, so that's 99 over 3 factorial x minus 1 to the third power. And h's fourth is 18 divided by 4 factorial x minus 1 to the fourth. Okay, So this is the fourth degree Taylor polynomial for h at x equals 1. I know I'm going to want to do something a little more with this polynomial after this, so I'm going to simplify I'm going to take that 42 divided by 2 factorial, and I'm going to write that as 21. I'm going to take the 99 over 3 factorial, and I'm going to rewrite that as 33 divided by 2. And I'm going to take the 18 over 4 factorial. 4 factorial is 24, so 18 divided by 24 is 3 over 4. Okay. And that's what I'm going to work with. Now, let's write a fifth degree polynomial for the integral from 1 to x of h of t dt. Okay? At its core, this integral right here is just an antiderivative for h with respect to x. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the antiderivative of this polynomial, just like I know how with power rule. So I'm going to say an antiderivative for that 11 is going to be 11x. An antiderivative for 30 times x minus 1, well, I'm just going to add 1 to the power, so it'll become the second power, divide by the new power, and I'll be left with 15. Okay. Same thing with the rest of the terms. I'm going to add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. 21 divided by 3 is 7. Okay, then I'll add 1 to the power of x minus 1, that'd be x minus 1 to the fourth. I'm going to divide by 4. Well, that'll just be 33 over 8. Okay, and then when I add 1 to the power over here, I'll have x minus 1 to the fifth power, and I'll be dividing by 5, which will make something like 3 over 20. Okay. Now, I know that because I'm taking an antiderivative, there's going to be a plus c. Okay. And if I was to plug in, let's see, yeah, I want to think to myself, if x equals 1... 
the integral from one to x of h of t dt, that needs to equal zero, okay? As a result, I know that when I plug in x equals one, I'm gonna have, you know, 11 and a bunch of zeros, okay? And I need the total to come back zero, right? Because the integral from one to one of anything has gotta be zero. So that means to me that c needs to be negative 11. Okay. And as a result, what I can do for other problems like this is if it's negative 11 plus 11x, I can write that as 11 times x minus 1. Okay. So if we do that and we just know that, my God, what am I saying, that, that we're taking the antiderivative of a Taylor polynomial, and it's centered at some x value, when we anti-differentiate the constant, we can just kind of bring that in there so that our plus c ends up being zero. But if you want to do it the way I did it, where you're just figuring it out, you know, with the c and the antiderivative of 11 is still 11x, you can do that. It's just the same. The next example I want to work for you is kind of a more traditional first-time calculus problem. Here's a function. Find the Maclaurin polynomial. Now, one thing I do want to point out before I even go and do that is that a Maclaurin polynomial is just a Taylor polynomial that's centered at x equals zero. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier when I gave you the definition of a Taylor polynomial, but if I didn't, it's important that I mention that now. Okay? Now, I used to, like I said, this was a very common thing to have to do, but you know, with the advent of technology, the internet, and even the TI-89 has a Taylor command, uh, the table problem is much uh, is a much fairer question, typically what you're going to see. But I want you to be able to do this as well. What we're going to do here is we're just going to take a bunch of derivatives of f, kind of make our own table, and fill in a skeleton. So let's bring in a skeleton. All right, there it is. So I copied down the Taylor polynomial formula, plugged in c equals 0, and that's what, I, that's what I've got. Okay, so now my job is to take a bunch of derivatives of f and plug in x equals zero and then kind of replace those coefficients with whatever I find. Okay, so if f is log of x plus one, then f prime is going to equal one over x plus one, which is x plus one to the negative first power. Okay, then I can take more derivatives using the power rules. So that would be negative one times x plus one to the negative two power. I can take f triple prime, and that will be positive 2 times x plus 1 to the negative 3 power. And I can take f's fourth derivative by multiplying negative 3 by the 2 and getting negative 6, and x plus 1, reducing that power by 1. Okay. Now I need to be able to plug in 0 and see what I get back, so I'm going to do that. If I plug in 0, I'm going to get 1 to the negative first power, and I know that any power of 1 is equal to 1, so that's just going to be 1. Okay, when I plug in 0 for this, I'm going to have negative 1 times the thing in parentheses is just going to be a 1 to the negative 2 power. We know that any power of 1 is 1, so that's going to be negative 1. Okay, this one will be positive 2, and this one will be 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, and I'm going to erase that f prime of 0, because I've got that ready. That's 1. And maybe I'll just leave it as x, right? We know that 1x is the same as x. So f double prime is negative 1, so I might fill that in. Okay. f triple prime is positive 2. And f's fourth derivative at 0 was equal to negative 6. I mean, I, like I lost, the, I lost that negativity somewhere in there, but that's going to be negative 6. Okay. And I've got negative 6. Okay. The only thing I'm missing now is what what is f of zero? Didn't do that yet, but f of zero equals the log of zero plus one, which is equal to the log of one. It's the special exponent I put on e to get one, and that would be the zero exponent. So I've got you know that's going to be zero as well, or that's going to be zero. So there's nothing there, and so that's my polynomial. Now before I go on and work any more examples. I want to show you about the Taylor series and the special theorem that's really kind of the machinery of, of what we're working with here in this unit. Okay, so the Taylor series is like the infinite degree polynomial. It's where we go all the way out to infinity. And, you know, it's very similar to the Maclaurin series, and it's the nth derivative, nth factorial, 
nth power of x. Okay, that's still the same. And the theorem is telling us that basically this polynomial that represents uh, a different type of function, that series or that infinite degree polynomial will converge to f of x on at least some interval at x equals c. It might not be a very big interval, but it will converge on some interval. What that means to us in like common English is, well, so we know that e to the x is 1 plus x plus x to the 2 over 2 factorial plus x to the 3 over 3 factorial, and so on. And suppose we wanted to find the value of 1 over the square root of e. Okay? Well, we know that 1 over the square root of e can be written as e to the negative 1 half power. And we could, you know, write this, you know, write an expression for e to the negative 1 half by plugging in negative 1 half for x, right? And wherever I see x, I'm replacing it with negative 1 half. So plus this thing squared over 2 factorial and plugging in negative 1 divided by 2. Adding this thing to the third over 3 factorial. Okay? plugging in negative one-half. And if I keep this pattern going, this series, this is a series, an infinite series, it's going to converge to the value of e to the negative one-half. Okay? Now, I guess that's because I know that the interval of convergence for the Maclaurin series for e to the x is all real numbers x, but, you know, that's, that's what I'm saying, is that this series here could also be written as negative one-half to the n over n factorial, as n runs from zero to infinity, that converges to e to the negative one-half. That's what I'm trying to say here. But in the big picture, I don't really need you to worry about that all that much, because that's really an analysis level concern, and this is just a calculus class. So we need to focus on being able to write Taylor polynomials, write Taylor series, work with them, extract information about the function they represent. That's, well, that's what we need to be able to do in this class. All right. Now let's work a free response example. This one's at least modeled off the problem number six from the 2019 BC exam. And so we've got a graph of f, a line tangent to it at x equals zero, and a table of values for the derivatives of f at x equals zero. And they're going to start us off by asking us to write the third degree Taylor polynomial for f around x equals zero. Okay, so what we're going to need is f and its first three derivatives at x equals zero, and I can plug into that skeleton, and I'll be, you know, I'll have my third degree Taylor polynomial. Okay, so in the table they're giving me the second and third derivatives. Okay, well, f of zero is going to be the height of the graph right there, and that's going to be three. So I'm just going to replace that with a three. Okay f prime of 0 is going to be the slope here. Well, it went over 1 and down 2, so I feel like that's going to be a slope of negative 2, so I'll change that to minus 2x. Okay. f double prime, I'm seeing that here is equal to 3, so I'll go in and I'll you know, erase this. Uh oh lost part of my question. And that's equal to 3. And then f triple prime is equal to negative 23 over 2. But if I'm dividing that by 3 factorial, uh, 3 factorial 6, so I'm going to have negative 23 divided by 12. And I might just change that plus to a minus. And that's going to be the third degree Taylor polynomial for f centered at x equals 0. Now I'm going to ask you something different. Write me the third degree Taylor polynomial for the function e to the x times f of x at x equals 0. And I guess you could try to like take the derivatives repeatedly using the product rule, and I just don't think that's going to be the way to go. What we can do instead is say, hey, I've got a third degree Taylor polynomial for f. I can write down a third degree Taylor polynomial for e to the x at x equals 0, and then I'm just going to multiply them together. And it's going to be, well, it's going to be some big distribution, like really big foiling. So I'm just going to kind of set that up. So I'm going to use the box method of multiplying these. Up along the top, I've got, you know, this is the third degree polynomial for f. Over here along the side, this is the third degree polynomial for e to the x, you know, both centered at x equals 0. And now I'm just going to multiply them, right? So I'm going to multiply everything by 3 down this column. 3x, 3 halves x squared, and 3 sixths is 1 half x to the 3. Go down and I'll multiply everything by negative 2x. 
and I'll have negative 2x. Negative 2x squared, positive, or negative 1x to the 3. And, well, I don't really care about this one because the degree is higher than 3. And I'm realizing, okay, I can kind of ignore this term and that term as well. Also, x to the second times x to the second, this term is going to be x to the fourth. I don't care about that one either. Okay, this one's going to have an even higher degree. And so this one's going to be out two, and I don't have to worry about those spots. Okay, so I'm just going to, maybe I'll, three halves x squared times one is three halves x squared. And this one, oh boy, negative 23 over 12 x to the third. Okay, and then what was this last term? Okay, three halves x squared multiplied by x is three halves x to the third. Now, if I want to write the third degree Taylor polynomial for e to the x times f of x at x equals zero, well, I'm going to need some more room, but I'm going to kind of collect like terms along the diagonals here. So I'll kind of just combine like terms, start with the constants. I only see the three, so I'll just say that's three plus, and then in the x's, I'll have 3x minus 2x is going to be 1x. On x squareds, I'm going to have 3 halves plus another 3 halves is 3x squared minus 2x squared is just going to be 1x squared. And then on the x to the thirds, I'm going to have, oh boy, I'm going to have a half minus 1 plus 3 halves minus 23 over 12. Okay, and I can do this arithmetic. This is not so bad. If I have 3 halves plus 1 half, that's 2. Minus 1 is 1. And if I have 1 minus 23 over 12, well, that would be negative 11 twelfths. And there I would have myself a third degree Taylor series for Taylor polynomial for e to the x, f of x, centered at x equals 0. And I think that's going to be all I've got for you for this video. So thanks for watching.